Okay, so now we're going to be looking at averages from tables. So this is when the, ta the data is in a table rather than being in a list. And so there are some differences to the methods that we need to use. So the key points, uh, sometimes data is not given as a list but in a table instead, and the methods for finding the averages are different. Now you need to know what these are. So the mode is still the most frequent, but there's a bit of a hint here, which is to look in the frequency column of each table, which will become clear when we look at an example. The median, this is an important new method. It's different to crossing off on both sides. Now, what you have to do is do the number of numbers, okay? So not the total when you add them together, but the number of numbers, add one divided by two, and we're looking for that value. Again, this will become more clear when we do an example, but for now, just write that method down. For the mean, you need to multiply the number by the frequency, then add those up, then divide by the total frequency. So an added step here where we have to multiply first, then we add up, then we divide by how many there are. Again, this will become clearer once we do an example. The range is still just the biggest, subtract the smallest. So get those key points written down, and we're going to move on to an example now. So here's an example here. So it says, Mrs. Smith asks her students how many siblings they had. The results are shown in the frequency table. So this is what I mean by results shown in the table rather than a list. Now we'll start off with the modal number of siblings. Don't forget this means the mode. And we know that the mode is the most frequent. Now going back to our key points, we've said to look in the frequency column. So if you look in the frequency column, you can see the highest frequency is number seven. That means that there are seven students that had one sibling, okay? So we're not saying that seven comes up the most, we're saying that one comes up the most because seven people had one sibling, whereas only five people had none, only four had two, etc. So it's not seven that's the mode, it's one that's the mode, but it's seven that tells us that one is the mode. So the mode is one sibling. Okay, now the median, using our new method, we have to do the, the total number of numbers plus one divided by two. So what we have to do first is add together five, seven, four, three, and one. And when you do that, you get 20. Now, that's how many people were asked. Now, what we have to do is follow our method which is here, where we do 20 add 1 divided by 2, and then we go from there. So we're going to do 20 add 1 divided by 2. So you get 21 divided by 2, which is 10.5. Now that's not my answer, and you should know that's not your answer, because there's no option for 10 siblings, is there? So that's not your answer, that's just part of the working out. We're actually looking for the 10.5th value. Now, what this means is if you imagine that we did write out all of these as a list, if you imagine we put five zeros, then seven ones, then four twos, we're looking for the 10.5th number. Now, we don't have to actually write them down in a list because that would take ages. What we can do is look down the frequency column, add up as you go, and when you get beyond the 10.5th value, you know that it's going to be in that row. So if we think about it like this, the first five numbers are zero. So we're not at the 10.5th number yet. Now, if you then put seven ones, that adds up to 12 numbers altogether. And we know that therefore the 10.5th value must be in this row because 12 has gone beyond the 10.5th number. So that means not seven is the median, don't forget, one is the median. So the answer here is one. Now again, don't forget what I said in the last lesson that your averages should roughly be about the same. So that's a good indication that you've done it right. Okay, now the mean. So the mean, again, if you imagine that we wrote down five zero seven ones, four twos, three threes, and one four, we'd have to add them all together. Now, we, again, we're not going to list them because that takes too long. So what we actually need to do is multiply these things together first. And then we get individual totals, then we can add those up and then divide by 20. So first things first, we're going to do 0 times 5 is 5, 1 times 7 is 7, 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 1 is 4. Now when we total these up, we get 33. And my final step, don't forget, is you have to do 33, so that's all the numbers added together, and then you have to divide by how many there are. So we're going to do 33 divided by 20, 
which gives you 1.7. Obviously, you can't get 1.7 siblings, so we're going to round that up to 2. So our mean is 2. And the range, nice and easy, is just the biggest sibling, number of siblings, minus the smallest number of siblings. Now, if we look here, a common mistake is that people do 7 minus 1. But this isn't the number of siblings, this is just the frequency. And we're looking for the range and the number of siblings. So we're actually looking at this column here, so we're doing 4 minus 0 instead. Which is obviously 4. So our answer for the range is 4. Okay, so make sure that you get this example written down. Make sure that you understand each method before you move on to the worked example. Okay, so now we're going to do a your turn question. So here's the whole question. You can do that on your own and pause the video and then we're going to go through the solutions. So starting off with the modal number of pins, not forgetting that modal means mode. Now the most frequent, once again, we check in the frequency column. Seven is the highest number, that's the most frequent, but don't forget seven isn't the mode. The mode, therefore, is 25, okay? 25 drawing pins. So the mode is 25. Now the median, we have to add these up um, and see how many there are all together. So when we add these up, we get 18 and then we have to do 18 plus 1 divided by 2 and we're looking for the 9.5 value. Again, 9.5 is not the answer, it's the value that you're looking for. So then we go down our frequency column and we see when we go past 9.5, so obviously 3, lots of 23, that's not enough, we haven't got to the 9.5 value yet. Then if we add 6 to that, we get 9. So we've only got 9 numbers so far. We're almost there, but we have to go past 9.5. So our 9.5 value must be in here. Okay, So this is where our 9.5 value is, because 9 add 7 is 16. And so our 9.5 value is 25. So that is our answer for the medium. Now, the mean number of drawing pins, the first thing we have to do is multiply our number of drawing pins by the frequency. So we're doing 23 times 3 is 69, 24 times 6 is 144, 25 times 7 is 175, and 26 times 2 is 52. Now when you add those all together, you get 440. And our final stage is to do 440, because that's all the numbers added up, divided by how many there are. So 440 divided by 18 gives you 24.4. And again, we round that, because you can't get 0.4 of a drawing pin. We're going to round it down this time to 24. So again, looking at our averages, just making sure that they are all quite similar. Yes, they are. That makes sense. Okay, and the final question is the range. Again, the range is not in the frequency, it's in the number of drawing pins. We've got 26 minus 23. So 26 minus 23 is, of course, 3. So our range is 3. Okay, so make sure that you've got all those corrections done, if you need to correct anything. And then I'd like you to move on to the averages from a table worksheet, market yourself using the solutions, and then averages from a table exit card.